what will Texas accomplish in 2023? A lot of college football fans from across the country are very interested to learn and to see what Texas will do this coming season. Of course, 2023 is the final season in the Big 12 for the Longhorns because next year, Texas and Oklahoma join the SEC. And so football fans from across the country are curious, is this year the year Texas wins the Big 12? Is this the year Steve Sarkeesian has a breakout performance and Texas gets back to that national limelight? A national spotlight that's been missing since the early days of 2010. As we try to answer those questions about 2023, I think the best place to start is actually in the past. So having said that, let's take a look at the 2022 season very briefly for Texas, and then we can come back to the present and try and figure out what might happen in 2023. Now, Texas's overall record in 22 was eight and five, with a 6-3 and three record in the Big 12. That 8-5 and five mark was a plus-3 differential. They won three more games in 22 compared to what they achieved in 21. So that's always a great sign. When it comes to turnovers, Texas has a minus-2 turnover differential. That's where you want to be. And when it comes to red zone scoring, Texas scored 20 more times in the red zone than their opponents. Now, taking a look at offensive and defensive rankings, overall, Texas was the 35th ranked offense throughout the country, which was an impressive accomplishment, especially when you consider that Quinn Ewers, their starting quarterback, missed several games in the 22 season. Defensive rankings, the Horns ranked 54th, which is a little bit less impressive, but playing in the Big 12 Conference, which is essentially just a run-and-gun league, those numbers are going to be skewed a little bit lower than normal. So overall, 2022 was a good season statistically for Texas, certainly an improvement over the 21 effort. And in that 22 season, there were four games that stood out as being particularly impressive or important. Number one, the Oklahoma game, the Red River shutout. Anytime you beat your rival 49 to nothing, that's a great accomplishment. When you have your rival's fans, grown men, crying in the stands, though, that's a tremendous accomplishment. The Red River Shootout in 22, easily, far and away, the game of the year for Texas. An overall dominating performance over their arch rival, Oklahoma. In the two slot for the top games of 2022, Texas versus Alabama. Now, even though Texas fell short in this game, losing 20 to 19 at home in week two, this was an impressive effort from the Longhorns, primarily because before this game, Alabama was predicted to win by over 20 points. Most people did not give Texas a chance. And even though it was a losing effort, what this did was gain a lot of respect nationally for the Texas program. Because at that point, Texas was no longer a rebuilding team. They were a contender who could hang with almost anybody in the country. Now, coming at the three slot is Texas and Iowa State. Iowa State came into Austin October the 15th and played a very, very tough ball game. Now, Texas came out on top 24 to 21 in a very much grinded out victory. This was a very tough home victory. And quite honestly, this is the type of game that Texas would have lost under the previous two coaching staffs. So while not a sexy win by any stretch of the imagination, this was a very key win for the program because it showed that Texas had the mental toughness to win those close, grinded out, sometimes sloppy games at home. The fourth best game of 2022, easily at Kansas State. This occurred during week 10 of the regular season. Texas on the road in Manhattan playing Kansas State, a team that has traditionally been somewhat of a challenge for the University of Texas. UT winning a back and forth contest on the road in a hostile environment. What made this game special was its back and forth nature and the fact that it was the Texas defense that came up with the win in the closing seconds of the game. 
Texas wins 34 to 27 on the road against a Kansas State team that went on to play in the Sugar Bowl. So a tremendous, tough road win for UT in 2022. So we've seen the past. Now let's move into the present. In the offseason before 2023, a lot of people looked at the spring game as a barometer to kind of see where Texas is at. And the spring game did not reveal much as far as scheme. It was pretty much vanilla for the most part. But what that game did show was the incredible amount of talent that Texas has on their roster. With the most recent recruiting class as well as the transfer portal, Texas is a fully loaded team. In fact, this is the most talented Texas team I've seen since the Mac Brown era of the late 2000s. Of course, most notable position on the field, the quarterback, Quinn Ewers, Malik Murphy, the young and upcoming Arch Manning. That's a three deep quarterback roster. That's something that hasn't happened in ages at Texas. Even having a very, very serious two deep has not happened since the early 2000s. The same can be said for running back, for wide receiver, for defensive back, for offensive line, for defensive line. Texas is fully loaded at almost every position on the field. And that's a result of having the number three recruiting class in the country in 2023, but also equally as important, having some high quality transfers coming in through the transfer portal. Folks like defensive lineman Trill Carter coming in from Minnesota. The all-world wide receiver, A.D. Mitchell, coming in from Georgia, back-to-back -back national championship, Georgia. The highly ranked safety from Arkansas, Jalen Catalan, and Gavin Holmes, who transferred in from Wake Forest, a highly touted cornerback. And I would say the biggest challenge right now, as of the summer of 2023, is consolidating all of those gains, of making sure you get the right person at the right spot at the right time on that field. And that'll take a little bit of time, but I have full faith and confidence in Coach Sarkeesian and his coaching staff. I think they'll do that fairly easily. Now it's time to take a look ahead. Let's move to the future and take a look at the 23 schedule for Texas. And of note, I'm going to just take a general look at this schedule right now. I'm not going to make specific predictions as far as scores and all of that. I need more information first. But we're going to take a general look, a preview of this schedule, and maybe see what some of the more likely outcomes will be. Week one, opening at home against Rice on September the 2nd. This you would expect to be a big win for Texas. The biggest challenge really here is getting everyone on the same page and figuring out who has progressed the most on the offseason on this very deep and talented roster. Week two, though, is the one that everyone is going to be looking at. And there's already a lot of chirping and chatter about this game. Because in week two, Texas travels to Tuscaloosa to face Alabama on the road. On September the 9th, week two, Texas at Alabama in a night game. And you have to figure everyone on the planet will be watching this game. Now, the 2022 edition of Texas versus Alabama was in Austin. It was a lot closer and a lot better of a game than most people anticipated. In fact, it's probably one of the better games of last season. I don't expect anything differently here in week two. I think this is going to be a fantastic game, not only from an entertainment perspective, not only for the casual fan, but also because of the numerous subplots involved with this matchup. This is Texas's last year in the Big 12. A lot of people are wondering, okay, how good are they going to be? Are they ready for that SEC schedule in 24? Well, this game is going to show a lot of people where Texas is at. Also, interestingly enough, a lot of people wondering about Alabama this year. Is Bama legit? Are they going to be contenders not only for the SEC title, but for the national championship? Or have they fallen off? Are they in decline? We're going to get the answers to those questions as well, most likely during this game. So week two, a huge game, not only for college football as a whole, not only for SEC and Big 12 fans, but also for Texas and for Alabama. A lot of things are going to be revealed here during this game in week two. 
Week three, Texas returns to Austin on September the 16th to face Wyoming. And I would expect this game to be fairly close in the first half. Whenever you have a big game the previous week, there's always some sort of emotional hangover. But regardless of what team you're talking about or even what sport, it's just a common feature of human psychology. When you have such a monumental game one week, the following week, generally there's some sort of emotional hangover. So I would expect this game against Wyoming at home to be closer than expected for at least the first half. And then I would expect Texas to pull away and win the game. Week four, Texas hits the road again, September the 23rd at Baylor. And this could be a very challenging game for the Longhorns. Baylor kind of had one of those down years last season, not really performing up to expectations. I expect Baylor to put up quite a fight at home. This could be a challenging game for Texas on the road in week four. Week five, Texas returns to Austin to play Kansas. Last year, of course, Texas went on the road to Lawrence, Kansas and blew out the Jayhawks 55-14, to getting the proverbial monkey off their back. That was kind of the running joke of college football. Well, Texas can't even beat Kansas. <laughs> well, Texas did beat Kansas in an impressive way on the road last year. I would expect a somewhat similar result at home in 2023. So I would be surprised if Texas did not win fairly big at home versus Kansas in week five. Coming up in week six on October the 7th, we have the Red River Shootout in Dallas. No one ever really has a great bead on this game. This is probably one of the hardest games in America to predict because as the cliche goes, when you're playing your rival, you throw the records out the window. None of that crap matters. All that matters is what happens on the field that day. After the drubbing that Texas delivered in 22 in the Red River shutout, I would expect Oklahoma to come out fired up. And for that reason, I think this game will be fairly close. It'll be fairly tight. Oklahoma was humiliated and destroyed last season. I expect they come out with a little bit of fire in their bellies this year. So this game, this Red River shootout on the 7th of October, I expect to be a fairly tight and a very hard-hitting game. At the midway point of the season on October the 14th, Texas gets a bye, and that segues into the next road trip on the 21st to go visit the University of Houston. The last time Texas played at UH was way back in 2001. About a week or so after September 11th of all times, I happened to be at that game, and it was a very, very close game throughout the first half. Houston has traditionally had a chip on their shoulder when it comes to the Texas Longhorn. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Dana Holgerson throw out all the stops when Texas comes to town on October 21st. I think this could be potentially a close game for a while. Eventually, though, I predict Texas will wear down the Cougs on the road. I see Texas winning this game, but it could be very close for quite a while. The following week on October the 28th, Texas returns home for their eighth game of the season, playing host to BYU. A lot of people who don't follow Texas closely may not know this, but BYU traditionally plays Texas very, very tough. And this is one of those games in the 23 season that I'm circling as a potential trap game for UT. BYU not coming into this season ranked. No one is really talking about them very much. They had kind of a letdown season in 2022. This could be one of those games in the 23 schedule that jumps up and bites Texas in the butt. I would not be surprised to see BYU pull off the upset in Austin on the 28th of October. The following week on November the 4th, Texas stays at home back in Austin to face Kansas State. The Kansas State game in 22, Texas wins on the road very late by a score of 34 to 27 in what was one of the better games of the 2022 season for Texas. I think this will be a close game again throughout the first half. Kansas State, another one of those teams that plays Texas tough. I do expect Texas to win this game. But Kansas State, again, they're not going to just roll over. They're going to come out and try and punch Texas in the mouth. I think, though, Texas will respond and they'll pick up the win during this game. 
The following week, the Horns hit the road to face TCU. TCU had one of the best seasons in program history in 2022. They made the college football playoff. They won their first round game, and then they got smoked in the title game against Georgia. But still, overall, a very impressive season for TCU. It's hard to say right now without getting a better feel for where these teams are at. I mean, we're still in the offseason, but I'm circling this one as yet another potential game of concern for Texas. TCU, very talented team, coming off an outstanding season. They're going to be playing with a chip on their shoulder as well with something to prove. Texas needs to be very careful when they go into Fort Worth that day. They're going to have to bring their A game if they want to come out with a win. Texas back on the road, the Road Warriors, the following week, November the 18th, going to travel to Ames, Iowa to play Iowa State. Iowa State, another team that always gives Texas their best. It doesn't matter where the game is at, if it's in Ames, if it's in Austin. I think here, Texas picks up the win. I don't see this game being particularly close. Because at this point, we're in the home stretch of the 23 season. I think Texas is all business at this point. And they pick up the win in Ames against the Cyclones. Finally, we wrap up the regular season at home, November the 24th versus Texas Tech. Now, this particular matchup occurs on the Friday after Thanksgiving, what's known as T plus one in the college football community. This is a day that Texas performs very well on. They tend to play well on this date. I suspect this will be a very solid win for the Longhorns. Of course, last season, Texas losing that heartbreaker to Texas Tech on the road in overtime. I think Coach Sarkeesian actually underscores what happened last year when he prepares the team for this game. In my estimation, Texas takes care of business at home against Texas Tech. This could be the last time these two teams play for a little while. We'll see how that shakes out. But I expect Texas to have a good, solid win at home on T-plus-1 against the Red Raiders. Taking a step back and looking at this schedule from afar, it is a very solid end to the Big 12 schedule for Texas. It's a very well-balanced schedule. There are some very difficult opponents here on the docket for the Longhorns in 23. I think the fans will certainly get their money's worth. There's going to be a lot of entertaining matchups this season. Obviously, the most anticipated matchup will be against Bama in Week 2. You always have to take a look at the Red River Shootout in Week 6. That's one you always circle regardless of the records. As far as other games to circle on that schedule, at Baylor during Week 4, that is one you want to pay attention to. On the road at Houston on October the 21st, that's another one to take a close look at. And finally, at home against BYU on October the 28th. This could be a very difficult game for the University of Texas. Having said that, though, this should be a lot of fun. If you're a Longhorns fan, this is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Not only is it the last go-around for the Big 12, not only is it Texas' last year in the Big 12 Conference, but there's a lot of great and exciting games on this schedule. Now, I'll be back a little bit later in the offseason with a little bit more specifics as far as predictions for each and every game and for the general course of the season. But I hope you enjoyed this preview for the 2023 season for Texas Longhorns football. This is Kevin in Texas saying God bless each and every one of you. I'll talk to you later. Bye. (music) 